Good boy. Stay. Thank you. Good boy. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, good boy. All right, everyone. Um, welcome, wonderful people. Uh, my name is Adam. I will be introducing you to the, uh, Penny. Down. Stay. Um, this is one of the animals, um, treat ball, um, and as you can hear, um, when it rolls in a certain way, it makes sounds. Um, anyway, so, it also is packed as best as I can pack this, using majority kibble and only a couple of special treats, short of like deliberately packing it with special like treats all of varying sizes um this is about the best packing job you can get um without going to a popsicle or going for um very little kibble and only high value treats so um uh this is a pretty average um in terms of what has kibble um but it's got a very carefully packing, a very careful packing job so that it, uh, um, will last as long as possible for our buddy here to show us how much he enjoys. Uh, so Benny is going to be our model today, and he's going to show us, uh, how much he loves this toy. Hey Benny, are you ready? Good boy, thank you. Alright, let's do some work, sit. Good boy. Thank you. Stay. Good boy. Okay, all done. Okay. Uh, yeah, is that good? Yeah? Is that the good stuff? Um, long story short, I basically, uh, I filled it most of the, Benny, thank you, good boy, I filled it most of the way up with kipple, and then I put a couple of pieces of jerky inside, um, particularly I think duck jerky, and, um, I did that in such, and I put them in such a way that, um, they blocked most of the opening, um, and then I I added a bit more kibble so that those were held in place um, and then I uh, added a big piece of uh, liver um, and a beef liver I think um, and then I filled it up as far as I could, could as packed as I could make it with kibble so that all the pieces were kind of held in suspension and that like kind of configuration so short of doing something like that um you're looking at what at mostly what you could get from either the regular pack um or the um partial pack um you can also just put a couple of really high value treats in that are a lot harder to get out and then just let them kind of work on getting those couple of pieces sort of thing. So you don't always have to fill it all the way up or fill it only with kibble or only with high value trees. Or... Hey, what you do? Can you get it out? You gonna rescue it? Part of the problem when it rolls under something like that is that it's not just um, that he has to rescue the toy, he also has to rescue any of the treats that fell out while it was under there, so it's, uh, it's a bit harder than it would otherwise appear uh, to be.
That's why I don't like chew on him for getting if it gets stuck under there. He's got enough natural consequences that he won't do it if he can avoid it. Sometimes they just leave his track and it happens. Accidents happen. Uh, obviously this isn't going to last for very long. Um, like I said, short of putting in like the popsicle or very, um, very the treats that are in there, particularly for their size and shape so that they're a lot harder to get out. One option would be like making it so only one diam like there's obviously three in 3D shape, there's three dimensions. Um, and two of the dimensions might be um, s small enough to fit through easily, but the third dimension making it larger so that it has to be in the correct alignment to fall out. So there's a lot of possibilities. Um, one really great technique a lot of people I know use is they'll chop up raw vegetables that the dog likes, um, whether carrots or whatever, um, and they'll use that, and then they can cut the pieces to whatever size they want to make sure they fit in well in that toy. So that's definitely possible for an option if that's... Um, if that be something that, you know, your animal likes. My guy, he's not huge on plant matter. Um, he's mainly into the meats and the, uh, animal products. Um, actually, it's kind of funny. Today, we were at the pet store. And, uh, the lady there. Normally, people aren't allowed to ever give him food. The only exceptions to... Um, other people being giving him food other than me is when we're at the vet the vet is allowed to give him food and he can take food from the vet um, mainly because I want the vet to be a really high value positive experience um, and when we go to the pet store uh, if he behaves and waits until he's told that he can have it and he gets the command then he can take the treat from the person at the pet store. Because I just want, you know, it's just a special little thing. We don't go to pet stores very often. 99% of the time, when he's in public, it's a place where he has to behave, he has to be on his best behavior, he has to mind his public access manners, like... And the pet store is one of the few places where he can go and be a dog and just be himself. So, hey, Bubba. Um, so, I sort of give us a limited exception to pet stores in that aspect. But they have to, um, he has to do what I tell him. Uh, he has to earn it. And he has to uh, wait until I say he can have it. If I don't say he uh, can have it, he's not allowed to take it. Indeed, if he tried to take it, like before I told him, then he would lose the opportunity to have it. So, um... In that case, it's less about wanting to create positive associations and more about just that this is a recognizing that this is a special place kind of like the dog park like 99 percent of the time he has to be on his best behavior and minding his public access manners and you know um otherwise behaving like a service dog um so, when we go to the dog park, that's the one place where he's allowed to play and have fun and be one of the dogs and just relax. And you know. So I try to make those moments special for him. But, you know, it may not be an appropriate thing for you to do with your dog. If uh, it's not, then, it, you know, disregard it. If it's something that you like and, and you think would be a good idea for your dog. I've had it.
We're all just trying to make our dogs have a, a decent and as good as a life as they can have. He just got one of the pieces of jerky, so he's really happy. Those are like, even after all the kibble has fallen out and, you know, all the easy uh, treats are gone, there's still a couple of pieces of jerky in there that are really hard to get out of it. You have to really work it to get. And that's a huge part of what extends the playing time with this, is having those few pieces so that, you know, they, you, it starts out with the pieces on the top. Those are relatively easy to get out. Then you have our hit with the piece of liver, which is much harder to get anything out. And when you get anything, it's coming at a much slower rate. But at least you got really excited going after those first few pieces. And then by the time they're starting to get a little bit frustrated, um, they, get, they hit the jerky and that really starts to motivate them. And so they work to get the rest of the kibble out. And uh, that keeps them going and motivated and on t target until there's just the jerky left, and then they uh, have to just keep working hard to keep going until they figure out how to get the uh, the jerky out. And then eventually, once they figure that out. They are rewarded by getting a piece of jerky. In this case, he's, I, I understand, based on what has happened so far, that he's uh, got at least one piece of the jerky out. Uh, yeah, I think he just got another piece of jerky. But there might be more in there. It may have been that uh, one of those pieces of jerky had broken into multiple pieces because I know he's had at least two, but it sounds like there might be more. Is that good? Yeah, you gonna kill it? No fear, no worries about that command. It's uh, just this command to engage and play with this toy. Good boy. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, see? Well, there's something left in there. What is that? Let's see if we can see. Um, there's a piece of jerky. So. Yeah, there's a piece of jerky in there, isn't there, eh? Are you gonna kill it? Let me see. You gonna kill it? Depending on the dog, they may continue to f work it until they just figure it out. In which case, this might take 15 minutes total, kind of thing, like one more minutes to finally figure it out. Some may kind of like get frustrated and walk away. <laughs> then they'll come back in a couple of minutes to a couple hours, and they'll remember about it, and they'll try for a bit more, and then they'll give up and go away. So different dogs will kind of take a different approach and different handle on it. Um, for some dogs, these last couple pieces of kibble can keep them going. I mean, keep pieces of meat, sorry. Will keep them going for like a couple of hours just until they figure out how to get it out. But then it's just a matter of luck whether it turns out to be, you know, the first time they roll it and get it. Or if it turns out to be the millionth time to get it. Where is it? Benny, on the other hand, he's used to being able to kind of go, okay, I'm bored at this. I'm going to go find another toy and find better rewards. So he doesn't stay fixated for hours like some dogs will. Yeah, you want me to help? Now, I don't recommend you uh, help be help the dog by getting the treat out, unless, like, the one exception to that rule for me and Benny, for example, is, uh, gonna give? 
Thank you. Ready? Um, sorry, yeah, the one exception to that rule of helping or bypassing um, would be that when they, um, when I go to do the clean up and wash toys and I pick them up, if there's still a piece of food in there and it's in good shape, and it's like it's not like it's been out for a while kind of thing, um, then I'll just uh, tell him to sit and whatever and make him uh, earn it instead. But uh, that's just to make cleaning up easier. Generally speaking, I let these guys work their own puzzles. Like, sometimes I'll play with them in terms of, like, playing fetch or something like I'm doing. But, uh, for the most part, I just let them work it out themselves. I don't want to bypass this, like, critical problem-solving and brainstorming period in them. This is important for their mental development. It helps them learn, learn, uh, delayed gratification and the uh, benefits of putting in hard work and... It's just, it, it teaches a lot of valuable lessons, so I don't bypass, but anyways, um, seeing as I don't know how many hours it could end up being before he figures out how to get that out, um, we'll say goodbye here. Ben? Yeah? What is it? But, uh, I assume you don't want to hang around to watch until he actually managed to, his, to figure out how to get the uh, jerky out. Um, as you saw from the inside of that, the um, squeaky thing that kind of works when they uh, it, when it's rolling and makes noises and stuff. Um, that's that white tube inside. And so... The food has to get around that and then down through the hole, which makes it a lot more harder for the dog to get food out than if um, it was just a ball uh, with a hole. In addition, by only having this one hole here, and uh, you see there's no other holes um, or openings for the food to fall out, really um, makes it last longer than if there were multiple holes. Um, that said, I would say that this whole size is kind of big. I actually want to see a toy somewhat like this kind of concept, but um, with adapters where you can kind of slide in a different piece to make it a smaller or bigger hole. Um, you know, take out a piece if you want it to be bigger, put a piece in if you want it smaller, so it can be adjusted to um, suit whatever size food you're trying to uh, used for rewards, um, or treats, um, I think that would ha in infinitely increase its, uh, usability and its functionality, um, but, I mean, it's not a bad toy, um, assuming the dog's not destructive, it should survive, um, playtime, um, it's not that tough, though, um, and if, uh, like, Benny decided to, he could break that and, and without even a second thought. It wouldn't even be hard. It would just be an afterthought, like, oh, I bit through that. <laughs> um, when I ran it over with my, when I ran over the older ones that I had with my chair, um, it was, uh, it was not too good. Uh, it was broken quite quickly, so even a medium-sized dog could quite easily break through this if they wanted to. So every time you um, clean it and periodically while you're playing with it, just take a look and make sure that it's intact and that they haven't bit anything off. Nothing's missing. It's still strong and like there's no cracks or anything. If you see anything, any problems starting to develop, take it away. Um, the one issue that I found with this particular toy is that sound maker thingy. Uh, that tube I find sometimes disengages from in here. And then it, suddenly there's two openings. And uh, it's not making the sound correctly. So when that happens, I just basically take some crazy glue and glue it black into place. Blah, blah. I take some crazy glue 
and glue it back into place. Um, or epoxy. Um, but yeah, so pretty simple. Um, the one thing is if I could be certain that it was a food safe material that I could be comfortable with, um, being in contact with food for extended periods, um, then it could be really cool to use as like a treat dispensing toy, um, in popsicle form. But, um, because it's not, uh, it will never be a popsicle toy. Um, anyway, so these are the kind of basics, uh, and, um, I will see you all around, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Looks like Benny's gonna take a nap, but everybody, um, have a wonderful night, and stay safe. And have some fun with your pups. Hey, Benny? Come here. Come tell me all about it, eh? Yeah, you're a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. Everybody, good night.